People who do this either aren't mature Christians or may not be Christians at all. This is something that you see more and more in Christians, in Christian circles, in churches, and it's something that we should not be doing. As a matter of fact, Jesus indicates that people who do these things or even look for these things, he calls them an adulterous and wicked generation. And what is that? Those are people who actually look for and need signs, who think that signs are for us as believers. But point in fact, Christians do not look for nor need signs because signs were not for us. Now, I want to show you this pretty subtle, almost relatively obscure looking video that you wouldn't think much about it, but I want to show you this and then you'll see my point. You have to see this photo I'm about to show you. This is a sign from God in the sky. The Bible says in the last days he will pour out his spirit and grant wonders in the sky above. And the photo was taken of the sky during our tent Jesus rallies, right before the Holy Spirit broke out. God has realized we were worshiping Jesus. There was visible miracles and healing. There was a eruption of joy and praise. Many were freed from mental torment and demonic oppression. We had to end the event at 10, but people stayed way past midnight, being filled with the Holy Spirit, laughing uncontrollably, as they were free from self-harm and self-hate. And this sign from God in the sky was just a confirmation of what he's doing. Check this out and give this a share. God is pouring out his spirit. You might be asking, well, what's the big deal with that video? Well, here's the problem. Even in small cases, we seem to want to find something, as he says, that will shake or rock our soul to the core. Didn't that already happen? If we're Christians, didn't it already happen? The problem that we're seeing today is we're having people that want to put on a show to show us something to give us a sign. However, what did Jesus say or who did Jesus say were the people that seek after signs? In Matthew 16, 4, Jesus says an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and a sign will not be given it except the sign of Jonah. His point is, one, there have been given signs and you all didn't believe anyway, but you will get one sign, that for sure, that being Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Well, Tell me a time where in the scriptures we see the apostles or, or anyone else going to show believers signs. Now, they may have witnessed a sign, but the sign was not for them. They may have witnessed, obviously, someone being healed. But these signs were done, as Paul says, these are the signs of an apostle to validate their message. Apostles were bringing a message of God. And so once the message is received, well, then now all we do is listen to the word. We already have faith that he is who he says he is, that he is God in flesh, that he died for our sins, and that by placing faith in him, we can have eternal life. That's the message that we believe, and that's what we preach. We preach Christ and him crucified. And notice what Paul says about scripture. He says that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching. So number one, if we're looking for something supernatural, something special from God, well, here we have it. The word, it is literally breathed out by God. And he says it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness. Notice we don't find in the scriptures that it says that these signs or these miracles are what teach us or what grow us. That those are things that are profitable for teaching and instruction. No, we don't have that. We're not told to look at, receive and believe the signs and miracles that may happen. And then because of those, those are what's going to cause us to grow. No, rather, Paul says to grow in the grace and knowledge, this understanding, the word no say, the knowledge, the knowing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what grows us. It's not signs. It's not miracles. It's not someone prophesying over our life. Those are not the things that grow us. Those are the things that babes, immature people, or more to the point, unbelievers, non-Christians, or as Jesus put it, evil, adulterous people, that's what they need. And so for us, he says, let the word of God richly dwell in us. Why? He says, with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So we're never to look for signs. We don't need signs. If the word is not enough, let me just say this as clearly as possible, as, as straightforward as I possibly can say it, and I hope that you receive it, not just my heart, but hear the actual words and balance that with the scriptures that I've shown you. If the word of God, if the written word is not enough for you, then you are not a Christian. If the word of God is, 
If the word of God does not move you, if the word of God does not cause you to search for him more, if the word of God does not cause you to grow, if you have no desire for the word of God, well, then it might be a clear indication that you are not a Christian. Is it possible that you are a Christian and you want to see something? Well, let's be clear. I don't know of one Christian who would not mind seeing a miracle, who would not mind seeing a move of God. But there are far too many people who are going by the title of Christian who want to see one, who look for one as though it validates anything. If we never see another miraculous sign, we've seen one, hopefully you've seen one, and that is your heart being regenerated and you becoming an actual Christian. That's the only sign that you need. That's the sign that Jesus says will be given. The only one that's promised to be given except for his coming back. So for us who find our solace and our comfort in his word and the fact that we have the Holy Spirit in us, which also is another miraculous thing, let that be enough. And if it's not, well, then you might want to begin to find out who Jesus is, have a relationship with him by placing your faith in him. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. Amen.